This Final Cut Pro 10 Tour presentation is brought to you by the LumaForge Share Station, the world's best storage for Final Cut 10. For more information on how the Share Station can improve your workflow, head on over to LumaForge.com. Right before uh, the um, the Avid was introduced in uh, 1989, there were two main systems, right? Uh, we had the flatbed editor. Uh, you know, film editors used to cut on that. Uh, it was a nonlinear system. And then the video editors worked on broadcast television. Uh, they were used to the tape-to-tape -tape edit system, which was an electronic device. And it was linear. It wasn't so flexible in terms of uh, timing and pacing and all that. A linear editing system, it will allow you to overwrite stuff because everything is fixed in, in, in a time code track. So you can overwrite things or you can overwrite with a clip or with black. It doesn't matter, you're just overwriting stuff on top of a time code track. So in a nonlinear system, uh, we can do something like this. We can just uh, push forward other clips or we can, you know, we can shorten a clip like that. Because uh, the position of clips is not fixed in time code, you know, we can just uh, move stuff around freely. This could be my own definition of what linear editing is. Uh, the position of shots is uh, fixed to time code, and in nonlinear system, the position of shots is relative to each other. All right. The thing is, in 1989, the Avid um, kind of merged the two systems into one because they wanted to appeal both film editors and video editors who worked with tape-to-tape -tape edit systems. They took metaphors from both worlds. So we, we normally call these systems NLEs, but uh, they are more linear than we think. Track targeting, like uh, patching one source to, you know, to another destination, um, like using uh, edit modes or selecting tracks in the uh, editing console. You know, many of these metaphors uh, come also from linear editing. But in 2011, you know, Final Cut changed all that, right? I think uh, it was a big change in, in, you know, in many aspects. But uh, for me, the biggest change was the paradigm shift, you know, the switch uh, from kind of half linear, half nonlinear uh, to um, a system that uh, excels at nonlinear editing, right? It was designed uh, for nonlinear editing from the beginning. There were many articles about the paradigm shift uh, who uh, took into account this, uh, this big of a change. And here, you know, this is an article published on Creative Cow about the magnetic timeline. Uh, it was published in 2011. And uh, David Lawrence says, in Final Cut Pro 10, we edit the temporal frame of reference as we edit our piece. This change in itself is a big deal for editors. They are not used to working that way. All right, so Apple's newly added differences run counter to years of expectation in regard to the timeline's central frame of reference. This makes it unintuitive for many editors, right? We've been like uh, 20 years editing kind of in a linear fashion using Final Cut Pro Classic, Avid, or Premiere even. So, you know, this was quite a big change. The fact that now everything moves, you know, when you uh, change the duration of a shot, like it was on the film editing system. So, you know, this is what I'm going to try to demonstrate today. Uh, the um, difference uh, between the classic paradigm and the new paradigm that uh, Final Cut Pro 10 introduced. So, you know, I'm going to jump now to, to Final Cut and to Premiere. I have uh, a very similar project in both applications and show you some of the differences. So, this is uh, Premiere Pro, as you probably know. And um, I have a very uh, simple sequence here. Uh, just, uh, you know, a few shots. And uh, I'm going to do a very simple delete operation here. You know, I'm going to just um, select a shot. Yeah, maybe I will just lasso this shot. And uh, hit the delete key. This is very simple. Every editor knows how to do this, almost in any NLE. But notice how, you know, nothing moves. We have a gap. You know, like uh, we could do in a linear tape-to-tape -tape edit system what we are essentially doing is overwrite with black, right? Nothing moves, nothing changes uh, its timing, its position in regards to the time code track. All right, so let me undo that. Yeah, I'm just trying to, to do a trim here. You see how, let me just, uh, yeah, link this. Uh, 
so you can see it uh, more clearly that when I do a, a trim, uh, we have the same thing going on. We have a gap and uh, nothing moves, right? So if you're in a flatbed system and you cut uh, a piece of film, uh, everything will move along. So you just want to shorten a clip and you don't want to have a gap. Now you have to delete the gap or use uh, some hidden tool in Premiere, really, to make a ripple trim or a ripple delete, right? So it's not the default tool. I have to use modifier keys to do that. I have to use like um, a shift delete to do a ripple delete in Premiere, or I have to press the command key to turn this uh, trim tool into yellow mode, and now do a ripple trim, you see? So I can push my shots uh, farther in time or pull, pull them back in time, right? You can also do this with, um, here, this tool. It's called the Ripple Edit Tool. You don't have to use modifier keys, but this is not the default tool, you know? You are normally using the selection tool, which is the default tool that uh, Premiere's Premiere Pro offers you to, to work with, right? So yeah, now with the Ripple uh, Trim Tool, I can do a Ripple Trim. Let's do these simple operations in Final Cut. All right, I have the same sequence. I uh, broke this project here uh, using the um, Philip Hodges tool. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to delete this shot. All right, and you see that there is no gap. This is an, why uh, the way a nonlinear editor should behave, I think, by default, okay? Because you normally, when you don't want a shot in your sequence, you want to keep following it with uh, whatever shots you have afterwards, right? You don't want any gaps. Also, if you trim in Final Cut with the default uh, selection tool, you see, is the first one it offers you to work with, you will never end up with a cap, okay? So yeah, Final Cut is non-linear by default, but it offers you, you know, the option to work in a linear fashion if you, if you need that, all right? So you can just um, do a shift delete, which is, you know, not the default delete, and end up with a cap, and nothing moves, everything stays fixed in time. And also, you can trim using the position tool uh, here, all right, which is not the default tool, but it's there to let you work in a linear fashion right in Final Cut. So this is just what Apple branded as the magnetic timeline, really. Um, a nonlinear editor, uh, being nonlinear by default, okay? So, you know, the other editors are kind of uh, linear, and I believe it's for a reason. I believe uh, they are not so good at handling nonlinear operations, and they try to cover that. They try to show you first, uh, you know, the linear tools, because the other tools don't work so well in a track-based paradigm, okay? That's uh, another thing I'll try to demonstrate. I'm just going to um, open up a more complex sequence I have here. Uh, what happens if I just want to move this shot? You see, I have split edits here now, which is what normally a an editor would do. You never, almost uh, not quite often cut the picture along with the sound. You will cut uh, <coughs> the picture at a different point in time. And then what happens if you want to change the order of this shot? All right, so, you know, let's try to move it with the default selection tool, see what happens. See, nothing moves, you leave a gap and you overwrite stuff. You are overwriting with black and overwriting with a clip here. Something we could achieve in a tape-to-tape -tape edit system. You know, it's a secure way of working. It's safe, but you know, it's not what I want when I'm, you know, assembling my sequence and try to be creative. I just want to swap, swap the shots, right? <coughs> so yeah, what could I do in Premiere? Of course, use a modifier tool to reverse the default behavior. Okay, so I'm just going to press command here while I drag the shot, and you see this is Premiere warning me something's gonna happen here. <laughs> Be careful, you know, I'm not so good at handling nonlinear operations, okay? So yeah, uh, let's try to do that and see what happens. This is a mess, right? <laughs> I have a gap here, I have two gaps here, my whole music track is broken in half, I have another gap here, and I have to fix this mess, right? 
Yeah, that takes time, really. And that takes your mind off of your edit, of your creative work as an editor, okay? So now, yeah, I could uh, delete the gap, delete this gap, delete this other gap. It won't let me. So I have all kind of conflicts here. I can just, uh, you know, move this, use the snapping to help me not uh, mess anything up. So many operations, you know, to do a simple swap, right? I cannot do this. There are other ways to achieve this operation in Premiere. Um, let's try a different one. Why don't we lock the tracks, right? We can just, uh, hey, don't mess with my music. Just, uh, just work with these tracks here, right? But before I do, notice that I have another music se section here, which is uh, lined up here, you see? And uh, yeah, let's see if that stays put after I do this uh, locking thing. All right, so yeah, I'm going to lock the audio tracks so they won't be broken in half, split in half. And now I'm going to swap the shot using again the command key, which is not the default key. And yeah, all these warnings tell me that something bad is happening here. Yeah, this is my title. It's also broken in half, split in half. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock this track and now try to swap the shot, right? All right, so yeah, let's do it. You see how I'm losing the reference here? Uh, my title here is not aligned with this. This title here is not aligned with this. This music here is not aligned with this, you see? Let me show you how simple is this in, in Final Cut. All right, so let me open the sequence in Final Cut. Here I have the same shot. It's overlapping the audio, it's a split edit as well. And I'm just going to shot, swap the shot, and that's it. That's how easy it is to just uh, make a change in your sequence, right? You don't have to deal with other tracks. You don't have to lock anything. Everything stays in place. This uh, sound goes with this take, and uh, you know this music goes here from the beginning until this point, and this other music stays starts here, and it will remain the same no matter you know how many operations I do, non-linear operations, just swapping shots. And since there are no tracks, you know, the audio will not overwrite anything or move anything out of sync. Let me try just uh, one more thing here in Premiere. Let me, you know, unlock the tracks. And let's say um, I want to do a ripple trim here, okay? It won't let me, all right? Another nonlinear operation doesn't work very well. It's saying trim blocked on video one. Why is that? I don't know. Let's just lock video one and see if it lets me. All right, audio one now. So yeah, let's just uh, block everything, you know, every other track. So I can just do the, um, the ripple trim I want to do. All right, very simple stuff. I need to adjust the edit here because I'm doing a, an edit in my music track. I need to, you know, end the music track the way I want to. And uh, it's not very easy to do here in Premiere. Let me turn snapping off. And just, uh, yeah, use my uh, command period keys. But see how, you know, everything that's not locked, like the video two track is moving along. All right, the titles. And also this music section, it's out of sync because it's on the same track, right? While I adjust this in a nonlinear fashion, I have to worry about other sections of my edit, which I'm not really concerned about right now. So I, I have to put my mind on things that are not uh, really the thing I'm working on. So we just work in a linear way. We just would do this, right? I never write stuff in a linear fashion, but what about, you know, if I went too far and I, uh, that edit, uh, that I don't like the way it turned out, uh, I need to, you know, to gain a few frames. Oh, I have a gap now, so there's something I need to trim, you know, to fill the gap. Overwrite uh, stuff again. Let me go back to Final Cut and see how simple this is. Here I have the same, right? I, by default, using, you know, the selection tool, can just adjust the music and this music session section stays put because there are clip connections here right 
So, you know, by using secondaries and clip connections, I can limit the magnetic effect uh, to the sections where I need it. All right? I don't have to deal with other sections right now. I'm just working here. I'm focused on, you know, making my music uh, cut in the best way, the best possible way. All right. There's a reason for that, okay? There's a reason why all these nonlinear operations are not so fluid in, uh, in Premiere or any classic uh, editor. Here in the classic paradigm, as you see, um, tracks are like almost like independent timelines. Without, right? We need to run all the tracks together. In fact, really, in terms of editing, we probably see this as the, you know, a better example of how we work. There is a vertical relationship between the video and the audio, right? This is uh, related to this piece of video here, and this audio is related to that. And we usually cut audio to picture, really, or picture to audio, right? So we work more in a vertical way of thinking most of the time, not in a horizontal way. But tracks work horizontally. That's the dependency that it establishes with uh, all the other clips in a horizontal way. Final Cut, because we have clip connections, we can establish those vertical relationships between video and audio in a meaningful way for our story, you know, for the way we, we need to cut. In the classic paradigm, we are always uh, having to deal with the relationships uh, between the tracks in a manual way, constantly. In Final Cut, we just establish that in, a, you know, in, in the beginning and we forget about it. We just keep being creative, keep adjusting the edit. No matter how complex the edit is, no matter uh, how advanced the, the edit is, which, you know, it's uh, more difficult in a classic uh, paradigm like this to make tweaks once the edit is refined, really. Once you have split edits, once you have music, once you have effects, that gets more difficult. And that's when the producer th wants the most changes, really. <laughs> so it's very frustrating to work in this system. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, you know, in the old flatbed system, um, the editor didn't have to handle tracks. The assistant did in the editing bench. So, you know, you just focused on being creative. You just wanted to, you know, make change here, make a change here. And then the assistant editor had to worry that the tracks didn't get out of sync. It's not your job, right? So some editors had a tough time switching to Avid because of that, because they just wanted to be editors and be creative. And I don't think Final Cut eliminates that problem entirely, really, to be honest. But uh, I think it, it helps in that regard a big deal. And it makes it easier, you know, for an editor to focus on being creative. And um, to summarize, you know, what I've been uh, covering here uh, about the main differences between the two paradigms, uh, the classic paradigms uh, behaves linearly by default, while the new paradigm, Final Cut, behaves no in, in a nonlinear fashion by default, all right? doing all the time ripple, uh, ripple, delayed ripple trim operations by default. Because, you know, the classic paradigm is not so fluid at handling nonlinear operations, like swapping shots, like uh, doing ripple trims, and the new paradigm is excellent at that. So the classic paradigm forces the editor to constantly manage tracks throughout the entire editing process, while Final Cut assists track management, management with connections and secondary storylines. So yeah, for me, this is a revolution in creative editing. And uh, it's not just a slogan, you know, is, there's a lot of thought put into this application to make editing easier and faster and more fun, really. And yeah, if Apple keeps uh, developing these concepts like uh, they've been doing for the past five years at a very amazing pace, I think we have a very killer product here. And uh, it's going to keep taking nonlinear editing farther and pushing it forward in a way that uh, probably other systems won't do. All right? So that's, uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, hope to see you around here in the Final Cut Pro 2 IBC. Thank you.